to make sure you guys can hear me. Don't look like you can. Let's go live on Facebook. Hey, goal getters. Welcome to today's Facebook live session. Coming to you on a little Zoom session because I'm going to be sharing with you my screen and I'm just going to make sure I can see the comments and that you guys can hear me. So, today we're talking about how to create your ideal work life schedule, right? And I'm taking you behind the scenes of my proven scheduling tool, the Freedom Flexibility Framework. I apparently can't talk and type at the same time. Proven tool. <laughs> so as you're coming on live, as usual, you know the drill. Make sure you come on and say hello. Tell me how your day is going, how your week has been. Happy Friday. We need to get used to these new Fridays, um, new Friday lives, because our oh, childcare is back today. Um, yes, it requires singing. I'm very, I feel like there is some normality back in my schedule. Um, so yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to make sure that I can see you guys and your wonderful comments. As you're coming on live, say hello. If you're watching the replay, shout from the rooftops replay and make sure you tell me how your week has been. I want to know from you um, this week, what have you achieved in your business? It's just taking its time. I can't, I can't, I just can't see the screen. Can't see the comments. At least it didn't crash like the other day. Uh, still can't see myself. Okay. <laughs> there I am. I see me. Okay. So I'm just going to mute myself as I bring the screen up. I want to know. There we go. Right. Okay, cool. So welcome everyone. Today we're talking about how to create your ideal work life schedule. Please say hello as you're coming on. I think, all right. I can now see everything. Everything seems to be working. Cool. 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 Always takes a moment. So share with me um, what goal you have achieved this week inside your business, right? No matter how big or small, I want you to celebrate your goal, This uh, sorry, your successes this week in your business. So um, today, how to create your ideal work-life schedule. And I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes of my proven tool, the Freedom and Flexibility Framework. I should say work, not works. Hello, Kathy. So I'm gonna be showing you, I'm sharing my screen and actually, <clears throat> excuse me, showing you the framework that I use. Now I use this with client, the reason I created this is because I used it myself and I use it with my clients. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory um, about this framework. So I have always had, I guess, an awareness of organization and time, right? I've always had an awareness of organization and time. That has come from, you know, my childhood, you know, as you, as you probably know, uh, many of our stories and our beliefs come from our surroundings, don't they? They come from the people we, you know, our parents, grandparents, teachers, anybody, sisters, brothers, whoever it is that we spend time with as we grow up, we absorb stories and some of them are good and some of them are bad, right? Um, but one of the things I have always been very, very acutely aware of, hi, Aisha, um, I've always been acutely aware of his time. I've been very conscious of productivity and organization and time. And I've always had, I guess, this um, mindset that I don't ever want to forget anything. And um, I was actually thinking about this. And a lot of this stems from when I was younger and in, in school. So if you don't know this about me, I'm a bit of a rule follower. <laughs> now, I'm not a stickler for the rules, not especially not anymore. But for me, I've always been somebody who follows the rules. And it was at a very young age. I can visualize it. It was my first day in a new primary school. So for those of you um, who are not in the UK, that would be elementary school. Um, it was my first day in a new school. So I had moved from one school to another and it was my first day. And this school had a rule that you were not allowed to have sweets or candy or chocolate or anything like that in your lunch bags, right? Never mind the fact that sold cakes at the lunch table, but anyway, that's irrelevant. <laughs> so you were not allowed to bring in sweets or candies or chocolates. And I remember sitting there at this like long bench and it was my first name. I didn't know anybody. And I opened up my lunch bag and there was a bar in there and I was pretty young. I mean, I'm saying I was probably like six. I don't know. My mom's not watching, so she can't tell me, but I was maybe six. 
and there was this bar and I didn't know what this bar was and I just burst into tears and I burst into tears because I was so afraid that I was going to get in trouble right I was so afraid that I was going to get in trouble I was such a rule follower and anyway the lunch lady came over I was like no it's fine it's not it wasn't candy it was like a granola bar anyway but the point is like the next day I sat down with my lunch and everybody around me was eating candy and chocolate and sweets and I'm like hang on a second like isn't there a rule here that we're not supposed to have this now this kind of unfortunately in a really negative way this defined a lot of my childhood and my teens because I couldn't understand it I always struggled and it's still beyond me. Like there are rules in place and there are people who just don't want to follow those rules. And so I've always had this awareness for rule following um, and for just making sure I never forget anything, right? Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I was at school, we used to have this thing called kit check, right? So in our PE, um, we used to like, I don't know, it was like once every quarter, I'm not sure how often it was, but you had to take all of your sports kit into school. And I want to just say that this was absolute bullshit because you had to take every single piece of kit so if you, for example we used to have to um we used to play hockey and you used to have to have hockey boots or like soccer boots like football boots right and so not only did we rarely play hockey it wasn't like we were playing all the time and our parents were expected to pay for these things but we i'm kind of like i'm going on a tangent here but um, we were expected to take all of this stuff into school with us. And literally I had like bags and bags of stuff. And I used to be so frantic about the fact that I was going to forget something. I would have notes all over my room. So that when I woke up in the morning, I didn't forget a single thing. So I grew up with this kind of feeling that I didn't want to ever forget anything. I didn't want to be late for anything. I didn't want to feel disorganized. Right. And I kind of took that with me. So for a decade, um, from the age of 18 to 28, I worked in employment, right? I was employed. And as you know, any of you who worked in employment at any time in your life, um, you know that, you know, a lot of your, a lot of your schedule, a lot of your time is kind of set out for you, right? It's set out for you. You know, you know, what tasks need to be done, who you're working with, where you're working. Most of the time, you know, that is how it's set out. You're very managed in your office or your, wherever you work. And I got used to that. I spent a decade working like that. I didn't always love it. In fact, I didn't love it. I always knew I wanted to work for myself, but I got used to it. I became used to being told when I could have my lunch break, you know, asking if I could go to the toilet, you know, those kind of things. Like that was what I was used to. And so when I left that environment, the one that I had so desperately wanted to leave and went into um, entrepreneurship, I was so excited, right? I was so excited to have days where I was wearing my pajamas to go to work. I was so excited to have good coffee all day long to be able to, you know, sit in my office and work from my laptop and just the freedom that I was going to have. Right. So I was, you know, the day came, it was the 24th of September, 2016. I was so, so happy. I was so thrilled. I couldn't believe it was finally happening. And very, very quickly, I realized that something was off, right? Something was off. I was so excited for this change for this um this like next chapter in my business and my life but it's it appeared that I wasn't really prepared for it and one of the reasons being is because um women who leave corporate to become an entrepreneur they actually struggle more than stay-at-home mums who transition to entrepreneurship because I have never been a stay-at-home mum so I had that year off when I was on maternity leave but I don't really consider that to be the same thing. And I didn't know how to juggle my freedom, right? My time at home with being a mom and building a business. And I didn't know how to juggle these hours. And I found myself very, very trapped in this lack of consistency. I found myself very confused and overwhelmed by you know, I didn't seem to have a plan and I, I didn't know how to create a plan. I'd never had to do it, right? It always been, I'd always had this kind of schedule of what was going to be done and how it needed to be done. This was always handed down to me. And all of a sudden, I don't know what to do. Um, and what I realized, you know, in the last, I guess, nine to 12 months, since I've been really working on this, I realized that this isn't something that's commonly shared amongst entrepreneurs when they're starting their business. Because when you start your business, it's all strategy. It's how to build a website, how to create your email list, 
Um, you know, how do you create an opt-in? What is an opt-in? What's a freebie? What's a lead magnet? All these different things, which are hugely important, don't get me wrong. But at no point, there seems to be this very big missing component of how do you create a schedule, right? How do you create, you know, even a flexible schedule? How do you know what to be, what needs to be done? And I found myself in this kind of flying by the seat of my pants area that just wasn't working for me. I was procrastinating. I was hopping from one idea to the next. I didn't know what I should focus on. I felt very lost and that didn't feel good for me. That didn't feel good for me because I am not that person, right? I've never been that person. I've always, for a decade, I was told what to do. And before that, I always had you know, awareness over time. So I looked at it and I was like, right, this doesn't feel good. I need to do something. And so I went to the other extreme and I decided to almost micromanage myself. So I decided that I was going to go for like full on perfection, which is really funny because I see myself as a recovering perfectionist, but I went for like full blown perfection with my schedule. I wanted to manage every second of every day. And I wanted to, you know, this is what you're going to do from this till this hour. And this is what you're going to do from here to here. And there was just no room to breathe. Um, and that didn't work either, right? That was a whole friggin' hot mess because all of a sudden I was consistently failing because I couldn't manage my schedule because I was so like, but I don't want to do that today or I don't feel inspired to do that today. And I've said to you already in the last couple of weeks how I'm a big believer in, you know, if you wake up and you do not feel in the mood to write, you need to have that space and that flexibility that you don't write that day, right? That you don't do that. Sometimes you just need a break. Sometimes you need to do something that's just methodical or something different. And so, you know, I went from one end of the scale to the other end of the scale and I was like, this isn't working. And over here, I was like, well, I don't want to go back there, right? I don't want to go back to flying by the seat of my pants. That's not who I am. That doesn't work for me, but this isn't working either. And I had decided, as you guys know, some of the story, I had decided to pivot my business. I decided that I was going to um, quit my personal training gig and I wanted to move into business coaching, but I didn't want to just move into business coaching. I wanted to help entrepreneurs in a way that allowed them to you know, get better with setting their goals, uh, managing their time more effectively. And I knew that there had to be a better way, right? I knew there had to be a better way. So I sat down with myself, sat down with a plan. At this point, I'd figured out how to create a plan. So I had created this 90 day plan. And in this 90 day plan, I was going to be quitting my part-time job at the gym. And I was basically full blown into, right, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to be a coach full time. I'm online. I'm going to be building my online business with business coaching. And so within this 90 day plan, I knew I was quitting the gym and I knew that that meant that Grayson was coming out of childcare an extra day. And these were the days I had available. And so I said to myself, right, you have two months to get your shit together. <laughs> I was like, basically like you've got two months to get your shit together. This isn't going to fly after this, right? I was serious. I'd gone all in as a business coach. I was like, this is happening, right? This is happening for you. This is happening right now you are going to do this. And I decided that I needed to sort my shit out and actually create a flexible schedule. I needed to figure out how the hell I could get more done in less time. And I wanted more time back for the freedom that I had desired. Like all of a sudden I was like, right, there's no commitments outside of my business other than my family. You know, there's no going anywhere to work or anything like that. So this is, you know, this is yours. This is what you've created. You create your outcomes, right? So I took a step back and I sat down, like all distractions gone and I worked out. I was like, right, how much time do I have available? Right. How much time am I going to have available? What needs to be done in my business? What needs to be done? Every single thing. Like, what do I have to do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis? You know, random shit sometimes comes up, like all of this stuff. What do I do? And I took it and I was like, right, this doesn't look that much why is this feeling so overwhelming? Because it felt really overwhelming, right? It can feel very overwhelming to be doing your social media and your marketing and your graphics and your imagery and finding stock photos. And, you know, and then somehow in there I'm, I'm coaching and, you know, for some of you, it's going to be, you know, doing your day job inside your business. Right. And so I was like, okay, there's got to be a better way of doing this. And I, 
had heard people talk about different ways of working in their schedule. I, I've shared this recently. Some people will have like Mondays of this day, Tuesdays of this day, and that wasn't going to work for me. I couldn't commit to like Monday being a day of only writing because I just couldn't do that. So I was like somebody who likes to work with a flow. I'm, you know, I'm kind of a workflow kind of person. I was like, right, I need a flow. So what comes first? And I started to look at in my business, what comes first? What do I need to create first before I can do anything else in my business? And I really, really liked the idea of giving myself an alternate week where one week I would coach clients and not do any work in my business so that I would spend that week coaching my clients and give myself the freedom. If I wanted to go for coffee, if I wanted to, you know, I don't know, go get a massage, something that wasn't working frantically inside my business, trying to catch up or post on social media or any of those things. Kathy says, I hear. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Um, and so I, I looked at this and I was like, okay, this isn't, I don't feel this way now. This is not, I do not feel like I've got freedom. I do not feel like I have the time and I want to kind of inject that back into my business and into my life. So I, I looked at it and I was like, right, you are going to create your idle work-life schedule, right? You're going to create your idle work-life schedule, what life schedule. And that's what I did. And that is what, um, and I'm going to share it with you in a second, but that's what the freedom and flexibility framework is. It is my scheduling tool. Now, the great thing about this framework is I'm not saying to you, on Monday, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. On Tuesday, you're going to do this. On Wednesday, you're going to do that, right? It's very, very flexible. In, its, in, in the tool itself, it's flexible, but then it gives you the flexibility. Because I'm a parent. My kid is at nursery. He will go to school in September. You know, if anything over the last couple of months I have learned is like, I'm so glad that I did this because when your childcare is thrown up in the air or you don't have childcare, you need to be able to pivot and adapt and adjust to shit. And the thing is, we are really, really good as women. We are really good at adjusting and being adaptable. But all of a sudden, when time and money is involved, we like shut down, right? When time and money is involved, we shut down and all of a sudden, we we don't know how to adapt, right? We suddenly, we don't know how to adapt. And so I want you to know that you are great at adapting, right? As women, we are better at adapting. But what we need to be really conscious of is our time and our productivity. We need to be conscious of our time and our productivity, where it is right now and where we want it to be. Now, here's the thing. If you have got like a a rock solid plan for your time, then you're golden, right? If you've got a rock solid plan for your time, you know what you're doing and every day you wake up and you're like, I'm going to do this and you do it and you move on, right? Then cool, right? You don't need this. But I speak to women on the phone via DMs, in coaching calls. I speak to them every single week. And I still believe 99% of the women, it may even be a hundred percent, but 99% of the women I speak to struggle with time in some way. Time is still such an issue. And let me be honest. I'm just going to be very, I'm just going to say it, right? If time is a problem for you, money will be a problem for you because time and money are energy. They are the same thing right? If you are walking around in your business with, you know, you've got a few clients, you're making some money, but you want to do more, right? You want to be more, you want to make more money. You want more time. You want more clients, but you're walking around saying, I'm so busy. I'm I'm so busy. I have too much to do. I can't get it all done. I'm so frantic. I'm constantly rushing. I'm constantly like fighting fires in my business. I'm constantly chasing things. If you are, if you are feeling that way, if that's how you feel right now, the universe or whatever you believe in is never going to give you more clients, right? Because why would they? The universe is not going to give you more clients if you are completely closed off to time because you don't have time. So often what I see women getting stuck in is this battle between time versus money. 
time versus money, right? It's a really common battle that we get trapped in in entrepreneurship. If I had more time, I could make more money. Well, if I had more money, then I could have more time because if I had more money, I could hire someone, right? It doesn't work like that. I have seen women hire out tasks in their business and it be a complete fail. The reason being, right? The reason being this can, this sometimes doesn't work is if you don't know the task yourself first, you, you really shouldn't be hiring out in your business before you have a good understanding of what that task involves, right? For example, I would never hire a Facebook ad strategist if I didn't already have some understanding of Facebook ads. I'm not going to know what they know. I'm not the expert. I don't do it every day. It's not my job, but I wouldn't hire out until I have a good understanding. I wouldn't hire out until I have systems in place because you need to trust those people before you hire out and you need to be able to invite them into, you're hiring them, right? You're the boss basically. So you need to be able to hire them into your business in a way that allows them to get their job done effectively, but that also you're bringing them in. If you're bringing them into your chaos, it's not going to make your life any easier. So this battle of time versus money, we have to move past this, right? If you don't have time right now in your business, you need me more than ever, right? There is this fear of hiring a coach or joining a program like Be More that is going to help you through these business solutions. There is this fear of doing it because I'm so busy, right? I'm so busy, so I can't do that, right? But the reality is that busyness is never going to slow down because when you have this kind of relationship with time, right, you tick one thing off your plate, something else comes in and then something else is going to follow it because you are attracting in that kind of relationship with time. You are attracting that kind of chaos inside your business. So you cannot sit there and say, well, when I have more time, I'm going to have more money. It's not going to work like that. You have to be available for time. And when you are, money will come to you. It's, you know, it sounds a bit woo woo and I get that, but I have gone through this myself, right? When you show up for your time, when you show up for your schedule, when you have the clarity and the ability to focus on just one thing and you get it done, everything else falls into place, right? When you improve your relationship with time, it is a trickle down effect into your life, into your relationships and into your business and bank balance. Kathy says, true, true. Since I stopped feeling overwhelmed, I didn't have enough time. I feel calmer and surprised that time and energy has shown up. Yes. Because, you know, I've said this before and it's worth repeating until a trillion times that when you work from a place of overwhelm, especially for us, we are entrepreneurs, we are serving clientele, right? We're serving clients or customers or students in one way or another. When you are working in your business from a place of overwhelm, you are not just doing yourself a disservice. You are doing your clients a disservice. You cannot show up in the best of your ability to them if you're working from a place of overwhelm right? So if you are constantly getting on your calls, whether it's coaching calls or strategy calls or whatever it might be, and in the back of your mind, you're like, I've got that frigging blog to write. I've got those emails to write. I've got that social media to post. What am I doing next? You're not focused on that person, right? You're not focused on that person. And whether you think you're great at poker face or not, they are going to pick up on that vibe, right? They're going to pick up on that vibe. So you need to really think about how this, this state of overwhelm is affecting your business because when you are trapped in this story about time, you are affecting your business, your clients, and your bank balance. As I said at the beginning of this, time and money is the same thing. It is energy, right? When you have, we all have stories about money, good and bad. When you have a story about money that is the for example, money is bad, money, you know, I, ha- I can't be comfortable, um, I've always got to struggle, uh, money's not for me, success isn't for me, right? When you do that, money's not going to show up for you. Success is not going to show up for you because you don't have the ability to attract in because you're constantly saying to the universe, 
I want money, but I don't really want money. And they have no, free, and the universe has no freaking clue what it is you want. So it's the same with time. When you're showing up in your business, chaotic and, you know, I want to say floopy, friends quote, um, and you're like, I have no time and I can't do this and I haven't got time to do that. You are attracting more of that, right? You're going to attract clients who show up late. You're going to attract clients who don't do the work. You are going to attract that kind of um, clientele into your business. You're going to attract more and more of it. And honestly, you have to decide at some point, what's the choice I'm going to make, right? You can read time management books. You can look at Jim Ron quotes all day long, but they're not going to make you take action, right? You have to decide that you want to change the relationship you have with time. And because changing, as I said, changing and improving this relationship with time is trickle down into every other area of your life. You will become more available to time. Time will show up for you and you will find more of it, right? Such simple solutions and strategies. It sounds like I don't have, you know, I don't have like some kind of magic wand. I can't give you an extra five hours. And quite honestly, I wouldn't want to even if I could. Because if you have a poor relationship with your time, those five hours are going to get eaten up like that. You're not going to use those five hours. You think you will. But when you have a poor relationship with time, those, those extra hours, if you've got them, are going to get consumed like that by something. And they're not necessarily going to benefit you. You have to work with what you've got. So I want to show you the Freedom and Flexibility Framework. This is the tool that I use to help my clients to. No, I don't want that. I need to stop recording. Um, to help my clients actually create their perfect or their ideal, let's not use the word perfect, work-life schedule. Okay. So I'm going to move my little camera down here so you can still see the top. Okay. So this is like, so this, I work on an alternate week basis. And the alternate week, I have a week where I am working in my business. In my business means social media emails, blogs, recording videos, recording content. Um, maybe I'm updating a blueprint. Maybe I'm checking in on my Facebook ads, all that kind of stuff, right? All that kind of very strategy based in my business stuff. And then I have, which is what you can see here, a freedom week. I just wanted to make sure that was the beginning. A freedom week. A freedom week is the week where I coach, right? So I only coach my clients every other week right? Um, if somebody books a call with me, they are only available in a freedom week. So if you look at my calendar, more often than not, you will see that my diary is closed every other week. And that works perfectly fine. And if it didn't, I would change it, right? Because it's flexible. But this is how I currently run my business. Now I need to update this because as you know, my childcare has changed. Um, but previously to this, my three days were Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday right? Those were the three days that I worked in and on my business. And so it's really simple, right? It's not this kind of move mountains, throw your entire schedule in the air kind of procedure. It's really about being honest with your time, honest with what needs to be done in your business and getting clear on what your priorities are, right? Now, this is my schedule doesn't mean that your schedule needs to look the same, nor should it. It has to be your own. Your schedule must be your own. It must feel good for you. So I color code my schedule here at the bottom just to kind of give you, this is a template, this is an example of what you can, what it would look like when you have completed the, the blueprint or the framework, sorry. So, you know, you'll see there are very specific times that I do things, right? I have coaching calls. I have opportunities for workouts or walks. I have times at which I might go to a networking event, right? This is just one example of one day. This is or one week, sorry. This is not the same every week of every month. And this, this is what I see us getting trapped in is this like, oh my gosh. So every week she goes to a networking event. No, I don't. I go once a month. Um, I go once a month. And I will only go if it fits into everything else that's going on. I haven't been this month. Um, but I will only go if it fits in. And it's, it's that it's having the awareness of like, well, I really want to go to that networking event. So I will make it work, right. Deciding whether it's a priority and really understanding how things fit in, because as your business grows, 
you will find, you know, you'll see on here, I have peer coaching. I have mastermind calls, right? Those things happen almost every week. And so I make time for those because they are a priority to me, right? Um, I make time for, I have a coach and we have calls and I make time for that. Obviously it's important to me that I have time for my coach. So the point of showing you this is to give you an understanding that the first thing is that you need to give yourself some freedom, right? None of this is set in stone. If I have a morning where I don't have clients booked in, I can take myself for coffee, right? If it's the right time to do that. I can go to a networking event. I can take strategy calls. I can take some time off. I have the freedom to do so because I created that way. Now I want to show you what a batch week looks like. A batch week is the week where I get like, I get shit done, right? right? A batch you should be able to get shit done week, right? That's what it's called, GSD week. We'll rename it. But the batch week, the morning looks pretty similar, right? Because the morning is pretty similar. But during the day, it looks a little different. There's a lot more content. There's a lot more writing. There's way less calls. There's way less um, free time, right? Still got business coaching, right? From my business coach, still got my mastermind calls, still got those things in there. But there's less time for personal during the day. There's less time for um, freedom time during the day because there's more of a get shit done mentality. Now, this has worked wonders in my business, right? This has worked wonders in my business because what it has allowed me to do is focus for a shorter period of time on what needs to be done. And in those three days, right, in the time I have available, I create and batch at least two weeks worth of content, right? And it's scheduled and ready to go. So that the following week, I don't have to, other than Facebook Lives that I host or anything where I'm showing up live, I have the space to coach. I'm not in the back of my head thinking, oh, I need to write that email. I need to do X, Y, Z, right? Because you are doing people a disservice when you are constantly distracted by your to-do list. I hate to-do lists. I really, really do because they are, you know, there's nothing, I mean, it's not their fault, but to-do lists are used in a way to write everything down. I am a firm believer that if something is important, it goes in your schedule, right? If something is important, it should be in your schedule, right? It, it should just, it should be there. If you have a call, you put it in your schedule. You don't write it on a to-do list because first of all, it's not some, it's, it's important, right? If it's a priority, it goes in your schedule, right? There's too much of this time spent kind of sitting and thinking about what we're going to do or sitting and thinking about, um, you know, oh, I have that to do and I have this to do, when it's taking action is the most important part, right? Taking action is the most important part of all this. It's really about understanding how you can implement your schedule, how you can take what you have to do in your business and make it work for you, right? Creating your ideal work-life schedule is not about perfection, right? It is not about perfection. There are these uh, two ends of the scale, right? I shared this image earlier in the group. There's these two ends of the scale. There's this end where we have no plan, we are procrastinating our asses off, and we are just idea hopping constantly. And there's this other end of the scale where we're overscheduling, we're overwhelmed, and we feel totally stuck inside of our businesses. The freedom and flexibility framework gives you the narrow, it navigates the middle. It takes you to that middle ground. It's flexible. Some weeks you might have a little bit more, you know, scheduling necessary. Some weeks you might have a little bit more freedom, but it navigates the middle. It literally gives the middle finger to perfection. It stops you from getting trapped in this perfectionist mindset when it comes to your time. Because if you don't allow yourself the time to have some space away from your business, if you don't allow yourself to enjoy everything entrepreneurship has to offer, this is the kind of crap 
that shuts the doors on businesses, right? I'm just gonna, it's, it does, it shuts the doors on businesses. The amount of women I've seen over the last few years who have struggled to juggle these different demands inside of their business with their family. Nobody's telling you that running a business is easy. Nobody's going, I'm not telling you it's going to be easy or always straightforward. It is a learning curve, but we have to get really comfortable with failing and winning, right? We have to get comfortable with failing and winning. Kathy says F perfect. Yes. We have to get comfortable with failing and winning. And really, you know, failing, you don't fail, you learn because failing is when you give up, right? Failing is when you give up. So you've got to get comfortable with that struggle. You've got to get comfortable with the fact you don't know everything and you're going to have to learn. You need to understand that showing up from a place of perfection will trap you. Showing up from a place of, oh, figure itself out will trap you. You cannot be at either end of the spectrum. There is this middle ground that doesn't require you to be perfect. There is this middle ground that doesn't require you to just hope for the best. You are allowed to have some strategy, but you're also allowed to have some flexibility with it and some freedom. So yes, it requires hustle. And trust me, when I'm hustling, I'm hustling. But there's something so much more enjoyable when you hustle from a place of passion, when you're hustling from a place of freedom, when you're hustling from a place of choice versus I have to do this today because if I don't do it, it's not going to go out and then I'm going to look this way. And when business is, you know, when we come at it from that point of view, you're going to feel like everything you write is crap anyway. So it's really, that's the choice we have to make. When you come from, you come at your business from a place of, I have to do this, I have to do that. If I don't do it today, this is going to happen. You get trapped in that mindset and everything you write will feel like crap, right? It is way, it takes way longer to write something blah, something that you feel is mediocre versus sitting down and writing something that feels friggin' epic, right? It takes longer to write stuff that is crappy and blah, that you feel is crappy and that you feel is blah because you're not just sitting down to write it. You're looking at Facebook, you're going to that person's blog and you're looking at this person's website and you're scrolling through Instagram and you're looking at their business and everything they seem to be doing and how easy their business looks and appears, right? When we come at our business from this mindset of I don't have time and I'm so struggling, we attract more of it. We go out and validate it. That is how our brains work, right? You ever found yourself, you know, you decide to buy a new car you drive, you've, you know, you bought this new car. It's like a super, I don't know, whatever your dream car is, really sexy car in this color that's really rare, right? And you drive out of the parking lot and you see six of these damn cars, right? It's not because suddenly everybody has bought this same car. It's because you're looking for it. You're validating it. Kathy says, so true. When I'm working on stuff ahead of time, it's easier to come up with content from my heart. Yes, it always, you've got to create from a place of passion. You've got to create from a place of passion. Passion always has to come before money. We're not going to do it for free, but we would, right? Somebody asks you at a dinner party for your advice on bookkeeping. Somebody asks me for advice on starting a business. I'm going to probably talk their ear off until they're like, oh, maybe I didn't want to talk to her, (laughs) right? It's what we do as entrepreneurs. We're so excited about what we do that we will talk their ears off. But the reality is we would do it for free and we're not going to go out and like, hey, I'll take on every client for free. No, You can do pro bono work. You can offer scholarships, but that's a conversation for another time. But, you know, we, we come from a place of passion. It's easier to get shit done. But yes, as I was saying about the car example, you know, when we, um, when we, when we have this like constant repetitive, um, I, this constant, what am I trying to say? I've lost what I was trying to say. I've lost my train of thought. (laughs) When, so the car example, when you, you know, you buy a new car, it's this really rare car. It's the car that you, you know, you love, you haven't seen people with it. Um, and you drive out and everyone's got it. Right. It's the same thing. Like I remember when I was learning to drive, we're talking many years ago, but I remember when I was learning to drive all of a sudden I saw learner car drivers everywhere. And it was the first time I ever became aware of it. I was like, 
why am I seeing this all the time? Is something the whole world learning to drive? No, it's because I was learning to drive and it was something important to me. My brain was going out and validating it. So I saw them everywhere. I don't see them everywhere now, right? I don't notice them. I noticed them because I was in that same space, right? So that's how, you know, that's how we, we validate things. We validate ourselves in a, in a bad way, just as there's a good way, right? We, we validate our, um, our unworthiness in the same way we would validate anything that's good in our lives. We look out and we seek it out. So when we're looking at around and saying, oh, I don't have any time, all we're going to see is people who have their shit together, right? Having your shit together is not this like perfect, you know, I am not, you know, the kind of mom, I take my kid to nursery in sweatpants, no makeup on, like, unless I'm going somewhere straight afterwards, you know, that's how I take my kid to nursery. Is that what, you know, is that what you would see if somebody's vision of having your shit together? Probably not, but I'm pretty happy with how I work. I'm pretty happy with the fact that I have my shit together. Like having your shit together doesn't have to look a certain way. Your business doesn't have to look a certain way. You know, you need to, to escape this mindset that things have to be a certain way. The only way it should be is what works for you. It needs to work for you, your family, your life. And when it does that, it trickles down. Everything is easier, right? So I really hope there's one thing you take away from this, this video today is that I really want you to understand the importance of this time versus money battle. When you struggle with time, money will be an issue. It's the same thing. It's energy. If you attract no, if you're saying I'm having no time, that's going to show up in your bank balance. Right. And I don't know about you, but when I look at my schedule, I want something other than zeros looking at me. And when I look at my bank balance, I want to have something other than looking at zeros at me. Right. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. That's why we have a business. We do have to make money. Right. So, when you can set yourself up for success with your time, it trickles down, right? I credit everything I did with my schedule, with my time management, or my time management, with my batching, with my scheduling. When I went behind my business to that back end of my business and rebuilt the business foundations and created a rock solid system, I booked clients. I booked 25 coaching calls in six weeks, right? That was the kind of thing that wasn't happening beforehand, right? Because I was just like walking around like a robot. I'm so closed off to time, nothing's showing up for me. When I made those changes and I started to really focus on that one area of my business, and it wasn't like I spent months doing it. I spent months thinking about doing it. And then when I actually implemented it, it didn't take long, right? And this is what I teach you inside of Be More. And as I said, look, let's be honest. If you are struggling with your time, if you are in that time versus money battle, you need Be More than ever, right? You need Be More because Be More is not going to take you away from your family. It's not going to take you away from the time you have. It's going to give you that time back. Yes, we get on coaching calls, but we get on those coaching calls to give you that time. We get on those coaching calls to work inside of this framework so that you can leave with a clear cut, pl clear cut, clear cut plan. So you have complete clarity. So you're, you know, you're like walking off, you, you're hanging up that phone going, yes, right. This is what I'm going to do this week and next week. And this is what I've got to do today to get there. Right. So when we're walking around with no plan, we procrastinate because procrastination is fear, right? Procrastination is fear. That feeling of, what if I can't really do this? What if I was wrong? What if all of them, whoever them were, are right and I was wrong? What if I can't do this, right? We procrastinate when we are very close to breaking through and doing something epic in our business and life. That is when we procrastinate, right? So if we can have a better relationship with time, create the business foundation that we want, show up for our clients, show up for our, you know, potential clients and be available. Everything trickles down 
you will see more profit. You will see more clients. You will find more time, right? You will find all of that, but you're not going to find it if you stay stuck in this constant place of, I can't do it because I'm too, I'm spread too thin. Right. And if you're thinking that right now is just, it's just not the right time right now. I get that. I do. I really, really do. But when you can tackle your time and your schedule in a busy season, it's going to make it that much easier to manage your time and schedule next time. Right. If you can get time back when you are busy, imagine how much time you're going to have when you're not so busy, when you're not in a launch, when you're not, you know, when it's not the school holidays, when the kids are back at school and you have some normality in your house, right? Imagine what it's like then. So waiting around and saying, well, you know, I have to wait until this time. I get it. You can, but it's ultimately about making a choice, right? It's ultimately about making a choice about whether you decide to stay in this overwhelm or break through, improve your relationship with time, and let it trickle down into the rest of your life. It really is about that. So I think I've got something there. Thank you so, so much for showing up for me live today. I, I love sharing this with you. This, this framework is such an amazing tool. It's so simple, but when you get the coaching around it, when you have the support and you are looking at it and you're able to implement it into your life, it can, it can mean so much. Because it really does give you that time. It gives you that freedom, that flexibility. You are able to show up in a much better way in every area of your life. You're able to be more, right? That's the point, right? That's the point. So I really appreciate you showing up. I really appreciate you being here. If you are watching on the replay and you have questions, please drop them in the comments and I will come back and answer them as and when I see them. Um, I am going to be live with you again on Monday. We now need to get like get used to these new live times. So I'm going to be live Mondays and Fridays um, because that's when I have to go. So I will be back with you on Monday. I've just put an event up in the group. Monday's live session is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be talking, talk, taking you through um, my defining moments. I'm going to be sharing with you some defining moments from my life. From my life. Don't worry. I'm not going to give you like an entire 31 year run round but I'm going to be sharing with you just a few defining moments from my life and ultimately how they led me to this point. Um, because we all have defining moments, good and bad things that can define us as well. And I want to share with you some of mine and give you some insight into, you know, how I ended up here, how it was that I came to have an obsession for helping women streamline their businesses and improve their time. Um, and ultimately how I created my own business. So I'm going to be sharing all of that with you on Monday. So I hope you will join me same time on Monday, 4 p.m. British time, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much for showing up. And I will see you all next week. Have a great Friday. Have a great rest of your week, weekend. And I will see you then. Bye.